to see faces instead of empty pews uh, when I'm recording on a Sunday morning and doing these things. So glad to see all of you here. Uh, and I'm uh, hopefully uh, that you're also glad to be here too. I'm, I'm excited about being worshiping together with one another. Um, there are a couple of announcements just in terms of how we're going about doing, go about doing things. And they're mainly to do with the communion. The uh, ushers are going to excuse the musicians to go through first. They're going to come up to this table and they're going to probably just be just musicians at one table here to start with. <clears throat> After that, we will keep the tables on either side, probably for family meals if they're large enough, and like maybe like the, the first four or three, so we might have the Leonard's and Thea and Barb on one table to set there in the car door. And we'll kind of try to keep a fair amount of distance at the rail and also keep it for family meals. It might take us a little bit longer, but also we have fewer people to deal with, so it might end up being about the same amount of time. We just ask that you would be willing to be flexible and kind of take our time with it as we go through it. We won't rush it. Um, otherwise, everything will be the same. Um, and uh, for, for if any of the kids missed it, I, I put it out. You might not have seen it. I put out some coloring pages on the table there for us crayons. Uh, and you can grab some coloring pages and grab the crayon. And then, but here's the one caveat for that. Take all that home. We don't, we don't want you to leave it here to put the crayons back. Just take three or four crayons, take the uh, coloring pages, and then those are yours to keep. Just take them with you and go back home. That way we won't have any of that problem. And besides, the crayons are cheap, right? So that's, that's a good thing. So we just keep them. Uh, we are very excited. Uh, we're going to have a service of the word and also of a sacrament. So I'm glad that you bring the books to you. And uh, I'm just happy, happy to see all of you. Let's begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings every day. We thank you for this opportunity to be together as your people uh, in your in your home, in, in this place that is our church, where you've promised to be in both word and sacrament. You promised to dwell here with us. Uh, we're thankful to be in your presence again. Uh, bless this time together. We might learn much, that we might hear the good word, and we might receive your body and your blood. All this we pray in Christ's name, his will be done in our lives daily. Amen. We begin with our first hymn, I Am Baptized Into Christ. <coughs>
Please stand. We make our beginnings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquities of your eyes. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We speak our introit today, half verse by half verse. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered. And those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad, they shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exalt before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows. It's God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked. The heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai. Before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the need. Glory.
let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson for today is taken from Acts chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All of these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle of all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that the field was called, in their own language, Akodama, which is field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to, to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle lesson is taken from 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. <clears throat> Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for, for, it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore 
confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you please stand? According to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory be to when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were. And you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. as a family in Christ, confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and we sing our hymn, number 539, Christ is the world's redeemer.
I don't think in my lifetime I've ever been so happy to hear a child cry during their scripture readings. <laughs> yeah? Wonderful. Our scripture uh, section uh, for reflection today uh, from our gospel lesson, John chapter 17. I'd like to look at verse 11 specifically, kind of just as a theme uh, for our sermon time today. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Grace, mercy, <clears throat> and peace be to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his dear Son, our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Chapter 17 uh, is what we would call the high priestly prayer. And we were speaking about uh, last Sunday that it's really strange, you know, chapters 13 through 17, so much, so much of the Gospel of John happens one night, happens on good, uh, Monday, Thursday, right, going into Good Friday. They are in the upper room. Jesus is giving them his last will and testament, his last supper, and then he teaches them this wonderful section. And then finally, uh, as he draws his teaching to a close, he offers up this prayer for them. I think the reasons why is because of all of Jesus' foreboding talk again that we kind of mentioned last week. Uh, he had mentioned betrayal. He had mentioned being glorified, i.e. being lifted up on the tree. He had mentioned uh, that he's going to depart uh, and, and they can't follow. All these things uh, Jesus is noticing. I think he is aware of their trials, their troubles, their, their troubled hearts. And he offers up this prayer to his father. For his disciples. And I have to tell you, if you've never read chapter 17, you know, the problem with John is that he takes a word like glory, right? And he uses it, and he uses it, and he reuses it in different ways. By the time you get done reading the Gospel of John, you have no idea what the word glory means, because he's used it in so many different ways. Uh, chapter 17 is kind of like that. Uh, it's at, at times you can read it, and it just doesn't even make sense. But then you look at it again, and again, and again, and eventually you see this just tender, tender speech, prayer to his disciples. Uh, a lovely, beautiful prayer. Uh, perhaps for a few minutes, we might take some time to consider this prayer uh, that Jesus is offering to his, for his disciples, to his Father. Yeah? Jesus speaks in the beginning about the truth of his connection to his Father. Jesus speaks about glory. It takes all sorts of winding turns, but Jesus is comparing the glory that he had before the foundations of the world, and we could also say the glory after the ascension, and the ascension was just this week, we celebrated that. The glory that Jesus had in heaven, he's comparing that to the glory that he will have on the cross. It says He says, Father, the hour has come, glorify... <clears throat> Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. In other words, Father, glorify your son on the cross that I may show to the world to what lengths you will go, how much you will love these people, my brothers and sisters. Glorify your son on the cross in the midst of trial and suffering so that we might remember the truth. And, and Jesus actually told us the truth. Really early on in the Gospel of John, how many of you remember it? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is what God has done. This is how God loves you and how he shows his love. Perhaps in the midst of their sorrow, perhaps they sit on the verge of losing their rabbi and their friend, Doubts have risen in their minds. Why would God take away our beloved teacher? Why would Yahweh allow these terrible things to happen to us? Why would, <clears throat> why would, why would, perhaps even now you wonder, why did God allow this disease to ravage our world? Why did good people die? Why, why, why? In the midst of this, Jesus gives us clear understanding. Verse 6. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. 
Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have, uh, that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and have believed that you sent me. Everything that Jesus is, what he teaches, the miracles he does, the truth and the love that he lives and breathes every day. I, I, um, I don't know if you've been watching it. There's a new Jesus project that some folks are putting together on, so on like YouTube and more digital than anything. And it's just really great. And I think the one thing it really nails is it just so shows the tender compassion of Christ very well. Yeah. And I, I love that part uh, of, of Christ, this, this, this tender compassion that he lived and breathed every day, that he never turned anyone away, that when he was tired, when he wanted to go pray to his father, he went to the crowds and he healed their diseases and he fed those people who were hungry. This love that he is in his very person. Jesus is God the Father's message of love to the world. In the midst of your suffering, do not stare into the abyss of your suffering, but instead look at the love and compassion of Jesus and know that this is the one true message that God the Father wants you to know about himself. He doesn't want you staring into CDC numbers. He doesn't want you worrying about nations fighting against nations, staring at these things, obsessing about these things. Maybe at your homes, before we had the opportunity to get out some, obsessing about these things. Rather, he wants you to focus on, your, on his son. This is my message. This is what I've done. Do not fear. I am with you. God, our Father, is love. He is full of compassion. God loves us even despite our sin. God loves us when we falsely attribute the broken things in the world to him. I don't know if you've ever turned on, uh, if, if you ever had the pleasure, and I say that sarcastically, the pleasure of turning on maybe, if you're, if you're internet savvy, go on YouTube, turn on an atheist uh, YouTube video. They're just the most like gross things you could ever watch. I don't encourage it. But you routinely, it's just they, they want to blame everything on God, right? Every terrible thing that's ever happened, every war, every disease, every person who's ever been sick, Anyone who's ever lost a, lost a limb, every single piece of evil in the world, they want to attribute it to God and never actually contemplate that maybe mankind has a brokenness in the middle of it. Yeah? And here's the really amazing thing about God's love. God loves even that person who falsely attributes every evil thing in the world to God. God loves that person. He desires to have that person come home. That's the depth of his love. He, he loves the people that even hate him. God loves us when we doubt him. Jesus is God the Father's good word to us. Earlier in the text, Jesus tells us what that good word is. Verse 2, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. God has given Jesus all authority over all flesh. Jesus is our judge, and I'll tell you, thanks be to God for that. We could spend many years trying to recount our sins in order to ask for forgiveness for them all. It would be a Herculean task, but one that perhaps a parent I know that I have uh, on, on occasion when my daughter has come to me and asked for forgiveness and I ask her, well, what are you actually sorry for? And then she has to sit and think about it for a while because she just kind of learned that old parenting rule when I've messed up, I say I'm sorry and then someone forgives me and then we move on. Oh, no, you, maybe you should actually know what you're sorry about. Maybe you should actually think about that. But imagine, perhaps this is, this is not even that, that uh, unreasonable, right? Maybe you should know all the things that you've done and recount them. You need to be sorry for everything you've done. Our God knows the true depravity of our sin against God and things done and things left undone. We say that in our confession. 
in things we actively did, and even sin we didn't even know we were doing. I love when, when our catechism kids ask, uh, uh, am I guilty uh, for the sins that I commit while I'm dreaming? And the answer is yes, but you have a Savior who forgives your sins, so be at peace. Yeah, it's just it's hard to imagine. Yeah, uh, even the sins we don't know that we're doing. In fact, we are born into sin. How could we know how to repent for all of that? So it isn't about giving an equal penitence for every sin. God shows us, Jesus tells us that it's not about all that. It's about knowing the Father and knowing the Son. <coughs> the word is complex. It is deeper than simply knowing a, a fact, a, a bit of data. The word, this idea of knowing, knowing this, it's a Hebrew word or the Greek word gnosko. And oftentimes, in the, especially in the Old Testament, it's used even for the act of, of man and woman coming together. They know one another. You probably know this from the Old Testament. You've remembered that hearing that word before, right? So it, it, there's this deep, deep understanding to knowing. And, and, and salvation comes from knowing Christ, knowing God in a very deep and intimate way. It's not about just understanding some bit of data. It is knowing the truth of someone, knowing their character. Eternal life comes from knowing the Father and the Son. Knowing the Father and the Son is understanding their unified message. And again, that message, we've said once already, is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's about knowing that message. Knowing what Christ has come to do. And trusting him. Even as he stands at the precipice, this, imagine this, Christ stands at the precipice of suffering that you can't possibly imagine. And that's what he's looking at. He knows it's coming. It's hours away. Standing at the precipice of suffering, Jesus loves his disciples and reminds them that they have nothing to fear. They know Jesus, and they know the Father. And in knowing both, they have eternal life. This prayer is a deep sign of compassion from Jesus to his disciples. For today, we only have a portion of the high priestly prayer, verses 1 through 11. There's actually, I think, uh, 17 verses in the chapter or, or more. We only have through verse 11. So we might look at the last little bits here. Verse 9, Jesus kind of closing up at least these thoughts for today. Verse 9, I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. <clears throat> all, all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. What joy it is to know that Jesus prays for his disciples on this night. And what joy it is to know that Jesus is still interceding for us even now. As we pray, Christ takes those prayers to our Father in heaven and intercedes for us. And not only that, he, he pleads for us. He pleads for us on behalf of our sin as well. He is our mediator and our intercessor. He makes claims and he makes them because of his sacrifice and his blood. Uh, the stain of sin is on us and Christ says, I have redeemed them, Lord. I have paid for them with my sin and my suffering. I've covered them with my blood, which takes wrath away. Forgive them. Forgive them, Father, and love them. Jesus turns to something important, uh, a verse today, verse 11. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. We are even today, as we are open, we are thankful to be here. And feeling the, a sense of, of coming back together in a, in, a, in, a, in a partial way, right? We're not all here. There's still kind of limits to our being together. We are still a separated church. People who we love, who are part of this family, remain at home. People who we love actually may have passed on before us and are no longer with us. Separation is not just because of the sickness. It's because of things that have happened before. In fact, that is the nature of the church. God's word continues to be preached 
and taught. The sacraments continue to be administered throughout the years. What is it that binds us together as a church? It is Jesus. We are all equal in him. We are all one because we all equally need Christ. We are all sinners in need of a savior. Christ binds us together. And since Christ is bound to the Father, so we too are in the Father. And uh, uh, from, from uh, the Ascension sermon that I preached on Ascension Sunday, uh, Thursday, there's a section here that's really good, talks about this from Luther, uh, a Luther sermon. This then is the power he causes to be preached, that all who believe in him are released from captivity. I believe in him by whom sin, death, and all things that afflict us we're led captive. It is a pleasing discourse and full of comfort when we are told that death is taken away and slain so that it is no longer felt. However, it affords pleasure and comfort only to those who believe it. You will not find release from captivity in your works, fastings, prayers, castigations, tonsures. Tonsures would be where you cut the thing on your head. And gowns. And whatever more things you may do. But only in the place where Christ sits, where, whether he ascended and whether he led captivity with him. Hence, he who would be free from sin and delivered from Satan and death must come where Christ is. Now, where is he? He is we're here with us. And for this purpose, did he sit down in heaven on his holy throne that he might be near to us? Thus, we are with him up there and he is with us down here. Through the word, he comes down to us, and through faith, we ascend up to him. So today, we might look around and feel even the slightest twinge of disappointment. We're here, but we're not all here. But in Christ, we are one. Not only with those who know God, but who aren't here but also all those who truly know the Father and the Son in the glories of heaven that are indescribable. They are now there worshiping the Lamb, and we are now here worshiping the Lamb. Our glory is great, for we see Jesus in word and sacrament. Their glory is greater, for they see Jesus face to face. Even the one who is at home sees glory in the words of of scripture and the preaching of the gospel. So you see, we all know God this day. We all see his glory. And so even though we are separated, we are together. Whether on that side of heaven or this side of heaven, whether here in this church or there at home, we are one in Jesus. Even as the Father and the Son are one, so may we be one. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. sing our offertory. One of the changes we are making is that 
Our offering will be in an offering basket. You probably saw it coming in on the rear, in the, at the, in the narthex of the church on the little table there. Uh, so if you haven't dropped off your offering yet, you may drop it off on your way out of church today. We're not going to pass the basket between us. That's just a small change we're making. I also want to let you know um, that we have an additional prayer request. Lenny, the father of Melissa Greenwald, uh, uh, is... Um, going in for surgery on his back this week. So we'll, we'll include him in our prayers as well. Let us pray. <clears throat> Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and in his kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. <clears throat> Lord, especially we lift up our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of that faith, that trust, that wish to know Christ and the Father. We lift up our brothers in North Korea, Nigeria, and Algeria. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools, our day schools, our high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries. Lord, especially today in Sioux Falls, we lift up our Lutheran school, uh, our unified Lutheran school uh, that we are associated with. Uh, bless those who teach and those who learn there, that they will be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who partake this day of Christ's bo uh, holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people. And Lord, especially in this time, we pray that those who are denying uh, our sister churches to worship in truth and purity, that, uh, that your Holy Spirit might come upon them and they might see the error of their ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who serve in worthy occupation, in professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For, all, for those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, especially Janet, Mary, Lonnie, Henry, Larry, Esther, Marge, Lois, Jeannie, Marilyn, Jody, Mary, <coughs> Lorraine, Bob, Miranda, Don, and Jerry. We also remember Madeline, Robin, Ann, Benita, Colby, Ashlyn, Kathy, Joanne, Linda, Shirley, Belinda, Sylvia, Travis, Rita, Tom, Randy, Matt, Logan, Jeffrey, Tina, Beverly, Dawn, Sonia, Jody, Angela, Doug, Robert, Simon, and Lenny. <coughs> that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. <clears throat> Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, <clears throat> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are going to uh, uh, shortly go into the service of the sacrament. And I just wanted to let you know that during the Lamb of God, uh, Bob uh, is going to be helping me as an elder today. And just him and I are going to be doing communion to limit the number of people uh, contacting the Lord's gifts. And we're going to, during the Lamb of God, uh, hopefully it's not too atrocious to you liturgically, you don't, you know, that doesn't bother you too much. We are both going to go into the sacristy and thoroughly wash our hands prior to the sacrament. At that point, we are going to uh, offer the sacrament to you, and I am going to uh, use uh, a mask during the, uh, the um, uh, institution of the elements at that point, just to make sure that I'm not spitting or speaking onto the Lord's gifts. So those are some of the changes we'll be making. Let's begin with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples and in their sight was taken up into heaven that he might make us partakers of his divine life therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ protect and keep you on the faith everlasting. So far now in his peace, confident your sin has been forgiven. Amen. And now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ protect and keep you on the faith everlasting. So far now in this peace, confident your sin has been forgiven. Christ will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Now in his peace, come. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in him and you will not thirst. If we believe and eat this bread, we will have eternal life. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Are now in this peace, confident, your sin has been forgiven. Amen. This is the true blood of Christ, shed for you, for the remission of all your sins. Body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Christ, protect and keep you unto faith everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen. you almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. the Lord be with you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
blessings to all of you. Uh, uh, we have, uh, I've been waiting for this for some time. And I have to admit, when you guys first started singing that first hymn, I teared up a little bit just hearing the congregation sing it. It was wonderful to be in your presence. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, the, uh, there is, we do need to have a voters meeting. I, I know it's not great timing, but unfortunately, we approve our budget in the spring. <coughs> Normally, we would do this meeting in May, but as you know, that's the problem. So we are going to try to have uh, the voters meeting on June 14th. Uh, and that's going to be downstairs in the fellowship hall. Um, we will have everything spread out as much as possible to allow for social distance. And uh, hopefully by that point, uh, things will have changed a certain amount. We can feel a little more safe about that. Also know that we don't need every single voter to be there, but we do need a quorum. So um, it's not going to be, you know, 200 people down there, uh, but most likely a group that's manageable for us. We don't really know what that'll be, but, but it'll be manageable. We do need you to be there if you can, because we do need a quorum in order to pass the budget, which is kind of an important thing right now. If you would like me to come out and bring you individual communion, probably more for this group, if you know of someone who you uh, would like to have individual communion, I uh, will come to someone's house if they are uh, willing. Uh, we can do communion outdoors, on the front stoop, in the front uh, driveway, uh, to be outside, all those kind of things like that. Just if, if you know someone who needs someone to come and bring them the Lord's Supper, please let us know. There's a lot of just kind of random stuff in the bulletin today. Um, not a whole lot is going on, to be totally frank. Um, I might uh, let you know that the online things in their entirety will, uh, will again continue until the end of May. And then after that, I'm going to reevaluate. And I know for sure I'm going to continue doing the pastors, interviewing pastors, at least for a while. And uh, also continuing Tuesday morning Bible study because they don't inter, inter, uh, they don't uh, mess too much with my schedule as it is right now. But we have a happy announcement. Um, uh, Laura and I have have uh, have uh, received two foster children, uh, so I'm going to have a little bit to spend a little bit more time at home right now. Uh, uh, so the evenings are kind of becoming more precious uh, as the days go by. You'll notice that what we've done with our bulletins is that we've stapled them together to eliminate the need for folders to come and fold. It's a, with the new copier came the ability to staple uh, bulletins like this with just regular letter sized paper. I have to admit a, a failure on my part as your pastor to get you more devotional materials as you were at home by yourselves. What we've done then is, is that we would like you just to take your bulletin home because inside the bulletin are both your announcements and on the very back page, when you get home, you can just tear this back page off. And this, when then, when you tear it off and you fold it in half like this, it's got everything you need to do a family devotions every night of the week. Okay? It's all right there. Very simple devotions, but, but very good, I think, scripture verses and hymn selections. So I just want to make sure that I was providing you something in order to do family devotions at home every night of the week. And I apologize for not doing that sooner. Um, the Lord's blessings to you as we continue his kingdom work and his kingdom field. I love you all very much. There's not a thing you can do about it. Apparently, there's another announcement. Well, are we still doing the diaper grooming? Can we still bring diapers? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, we are doing a, there's two. There's actually two boxes out. We're doing a diaper derby, and then we've had a, a fairly large uptick in the number of people in the congregation who have been needing food. So we are collecting food uh, here at the congregation. But I just want you to know that the majority of the donations... I would say probably all the donations right now are going to be kept in house for us to be able to give people who are coming to our church regularly looking for food. So if you'd like to bring both diapers for the Alpha Center and food for our food bank here at the church to be able to give out to folks who have been coming looking for food. And, and in the last two weeks, we've had five or six people already coming to the church specifically looking for food and other help. Um, I think there's going to be more as the days go on. So if you can help us with that, uh, with those two efforts, we would greatly appreciate it. How we're going to work this then going out is that we, we'd like you to pretty much go out the same way you came in. Um, you, certainly you can wave at folks as you're heading out, but we ask that you, you go straight out to the parking lot to your cars. If you want to chat with someone, perhaps it might be best for you to do it outside in the parking lot, okay? Just, just to be safe. So when we excuse you, we'd like you to go right out. I am going to go out and sit by the Willow exit. 
Okay? I'm going to stand by the will exit. And if you'd like to, if there's something you want to talk to me about, or if you'd just like to say hello to me before you go home today, you can drive through and, and we can chat at a safe distance from your car window. Okay? So the Lord's blessings. We, I, I'm very, uh, you can't, I can't tell you how much, it's, it, how much better it is to preach to people instead of empty pews. So uh, I love you guys very much. I'm glad to have you back. Lord's blessings. Thank you.